Hey guys, lesson 1.8, an introduction to equations. I think you guys are pretty, pretty good at this, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because the next chapter has a lot of stuff with equations, and so does the next chapter. So just an intro to equations. So an equation is a mathematical sentence that uses the equal sign. So that's the difference between an equation and an expression is that the equation uses the equal sign. So this was an algebraic expression. We put in the equal sign, which is read in English as is, and I can just put a number. So x plus 7 equals 10, or the sum of x plus 7 is 10 if it was written in words, if you remember the very first section that we started with. Now a solution to the equation is a value that makes the equation true. So a solution to the equation is a value that would make the equation true. So you pick a number, if it, when you put it in place of the variable, it makes the equation true. Now for these, you can probably just see what the solution is. If I just use this one, you could ask yourself, okay, what would X have to be My bad. What would x have to be to add to 7 to equal 10? And you can probably tell me that x would have to be 3. So that would be your solution. So some of this you can do with mental math. Other stuff you're going to have to show steps. Personally, I think you need to go ahead and start showing your steps because when you get in the habit of doing it and you get to the longer problems, especially in Algebra 2, you're going to need those skills. Again, adding to your math toolbox. All right. How to identify or check to see if a value or a number is a solution. So if you want to see if x equals 6 is a solution, you're just going to substitute it in. So you would have 32 equals 2 times, you're going to put 6 in there, and then plus 12. And then you could use your calculator or you can work it out um, by hand. So we're going to bring our 32 down. 2 times 6 is 12. And then 12 times 12, or excuse me, 12 plus 12 is 24. So 32 equals 24. Is that true? No. So this is not a solution. So not a solution. As far as Schoology goes, you're going to be either typing in no or yes. So the answer would be no. It's not a solution. So I'm going to go through this video a little quicker because my other video was pretty long and I think you can pause me when I ask you to and then I won't have so much wait time. All right, so is m equals one half a solution of the equation six times m minus three equals negative five? Again, you're going to take what m is equal to, you're going to substitute it in place of m. So you're going to have six times one half minus eight is equal to negative five. You can type this in your calculator. You can work it out by hand. Six times a half. What is half of six? That would be three minus eight equals negative five. And then three minus eight would be negative five. Is negative five equal to negative five? It sure is. So yep, this is a solution. So m equals one half is a solution. So in Schoology, you would just simply say yes. And that's in the directions on Schoology. So if you want to check to see if a number is a solution, and this goes all the way to Algebra 2. You can do this when you get to exponential equations, logarithmic equations, any equations that you do from now on, if you want to know if it's the correct solution, you just simply substitute it in and make sure both sides are equal. All right. Now, you can solve some equations with mental math. 
This is going back to what we first did earlier. What does x have to be to add to 7 to get 10? And you could say that x is equal to 3 because 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. If you look at this, you can think, okay, what does x have to be to be divided by 2 or cut in half to be equal to 4? That's correct. x would have to be 8 because 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now look at number 5. What does x have to be to subtract 7 in order to get 13? What minus 7 would give you 13? Correct. X would have to be 20 because 20 minus 7 is equal to 13. All right, look at number 6. 5 times what? would equal 15. So what would x be? 5 times what would that x have to be to equal 15? Yep, x would have to be 3. So you can use mental math. We're going to talk about the official way to move things from one side to the other. So I'm doing a little bit more than that what's in this lesson in the book, but we're repeating Algebra 1. So a lot of you have some really good knowledge. You learned more in Algebra 1 than you think you did. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this. It kind of makes sense to go ahead and talk about it. It's inverse operations. You use that to solve your multi-step equations. And it, what is an inverse? If you go back to, I think it's section 1415, we talked about inverses. They're opposites. So what would be inverse operations? What would be the opposite for addition? And that would be subtraction. What would be the inverse operation for multiplication? And that is correct. It would be division. They're inverses. They undo each other. If you add something and subtract it, or if you multiply by something and then divide it, they undo each other. So we're going to talk about how to use these inverse operations to legally move something from one side of the equation to the other. So if you have x minus 3 is equal to 10, that is a minus 3. So to legally move it to the other side, we would add 3 to this side. The sides are split up with the equal sign, so you'd have to go and add it to the other side. Then we'll go back to that inverse identity. Negative 3 plus 3 would cancel or add out, and x would be equal to, read it, 10 plus 3, which would be 13. So I think it's really important that you can do the mental math, but I also think it's very important that you understand how to legally move something from one side to the other. Now, this is written kind of strange. You're going to see things like that. We can switch it because we've learned those properties. We can actually switch both sides of the equal sign. But in the process, 7 plus y is the same as y plus 7. See how it starts looking better? For those of you that math is just not your thing and it has to look a certain way, equals 4. So y plus 7, how do we move 7 to the other side? We use an inverse operation. We do the opposite. The opposite of addition would be subtraction. So y comes down, 7 minus 7, those are inverses. They add, up, they add out to give you 0 and bring down your equal sign. And then 4 minus 7 would be negative 3. All right, look at number three. Do you remember how to read this? This says six times x. I know we say six x. I'm guilty of it too, but we have to remember that this is six times x. And so what is the opposite of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide both sides by six. And then six divided by six, they cancel. 
and you have 1x, just write x, and then 36 divided by 6 is just 6. All right, so you have x divided by 7. What's the opposite of division, the inverse operation? Multiplication. So you're going to multiply both sides by 7. You can make 7 into a fraction by putting it over 1. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And then you're going to cancel because 7 divided by 7, they cancel each other out. Remember, if you have something on the numerator and the denominator the same, you can cancel. X is going to come down. And then 5 times 7 is 35. You can always check your answers by making that substitution into the original problem. If you put 35 where X is, 35 divided by 7 would be that 5. All right, so you can pause the lesson for a minute and try those four. I'm going to keep working them so that we have a shorter video. So if on number five, if you don't like how this looks, you could switch it to D plus 18 equals 24. And how do you move 18 to the other side? If it's positive, if it's addition, you're going to subtract. Remember that equal sign is what splits the sides of the equation in half. And you have, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other to keep it balanced. And 18 minus 18, they add out. D comes down. Equal sign comes down. And then 24 minus 18 would be 6. Number 6, this says 3 times C equals 9. The opposite of times would be to divide. And we're going to divide by the number next to the variable, not by 9. We have, we're getting rid of the 1 by the variable because we want the variable alone. We want to know what C is. So 3's would cancel. So you have 1C. And then 9 divided by 3 is 3. All right, look at number 7. 20 times A is equal to 100. You would divide both sides by 20 because it's times. The, the opposite or the inverse would be to divide. So 20 divided by 20, they cancel to give you 1A. And then 100 divided by 20 is 5. Now what do you do on number 8? you got M divided by 3. Divided. What's the inverse operation? Multiply. So you're going to multiply both sides by 3. You can make 3 into a fraction. And then when you have 3 times m over 3, since 3 is in the numerator and 3 is in the denominator, they cancel. And you have 1m. And then 3 times 4 is 12. All right, last page. Like I said, we're probably doing more than what's in this section, but this is not new. This is stuff you've done, and I think it's just a good time to start reviewing some of these concepts. All right, so now we have two-step equations. That's all we're going to do, and then I'm going to stop this lesson. And anytime you want to pause and try some of the problems, please do so. Remember, trying to work them, and if you make a mistake, you can always fix it, learn from it, so you don't do it again. All right, so number nine, I have four times m plus one equals nine. I have to get everything away from 4m. I have to get to 4m. So that one is in the way. It is a plus one, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to bring down my 4 times m. Those add out. Bring down your equal sign. Some of you leave stuff off. Right neat. Carefully bring stuff down. 9 minus 1 is 8. So now you have 4 times m equals 8. The opposite of times is to divide. And then you have m is equal to 2. You can always check it and see if it's a solution. So let's go back to the original problem. You have 4 times m. So in place of m, I'm going to put 2. 
put that plus 1 and equals 9. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So that is the solution. You can always check it. All right, look at number 10. You have 5 times a minus 4 equals negative 16. We need to move this away so we can start getting a isolated. So it's subtract, so we're going to add. And then you have 5 times a, those add out, equals negative 16 plus 4. Type it in your calculator if you need to. Negative 16 plus 4 would be negative 12. And then... 5 times a means to get a by itself, we have to do the opposite. We're going to divide by 5, and then you get a is equal to negative 12 over 5. We're not going to turn it into a decimal. We're just going to leave it as an improper fraction. It's what we'll do in Algebra 2 for the most part. If we start with decimals, we'll give answers as decimals. If we don't, we'll leave them as fractions. All right, I'm not going to change number 11 around because I think you have been doing equations in Algebra 1 before where you left things. I've given you the opportunity to switch them around, but now I'm going to show you what you do if you don't change the terms to, look, to read left to right. So you have negative 3 plus t equals 19. You want t by itself. You have a negative 3. To move it, you have to do the opposite. It's negative, so you put plus 3. Negative 3 plus 3 adds out. You have a positive t that comes down. Don't forget your equal sign. And then 19 plus 3, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, if you go to number 12, you have 6 plus 2x equals 17. I still like switching it over like 6 plus 2x. So I'm going to do that just because I know some of you really struggle with algebra. And I think having at least the x on the left side is better. So if you have 6 and you need to move it away so you can start to get to that 2x, 6 is positive. The opposite would be to subtract. So 6 minus 6, that cancels. It adds out. Your positive 2 times x comes down. 17 minus 6 is 11. And then if you have 2 times x equals 11, the inverse or the opposite would be to divide. Your 2's are going to cancel, and you're left with x equals 11 divided by 2. Don't change it into a decimal. Leave it. I'll know if, you're, if you watched the video and paid any attention when we're talking about this in class. And also, when you, if you enter the decimal in the computer it's, in Schoology, it's not going to work. All right, number 13. We're almost done. We have 16 problems total. All right, 2 times x minus 11 equals 1. What do you do first? That's correct. You're going to add 1 to both sides. So those add out. 2x comes down. Equal sign comes down. 11 plus 1 is 12. So now you have 2 times x equals 12. You're going to divide both sides by 2. Those cancel, and x is equal to 12 divided by 2 would be 6. Remember, you can pause at any time and try to work these. All right, number 14, what would you do first? You would subtract 3. Those add out. 5 times x comes down. 23 minus 3 is 20. So 5 times x equals 20. We're going to divide both sides by 5. So you have x equals 20 divided by 5 would be 4. All right. I'll do 15. You want to take a minute to do 16. Or actually, I'll do 16 because it has a negative, and then you can try 15. So I'm going to do this one first, and then if you want to pause it and try this one, you can. So here's the term that has the end. That's what I'm looking for. I need to get rid of this. It's a positive one, so I'm going to subtract one from both sides. Remember the equal sign splits it. So these add out, and I'm going to bring down negative one-fourth times n 
equals 1 minus 1 is 0. Now, how do I get rid of the negative 1 fourth? Let's go back. What is that R word? We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So, remember we need a negative times a negative to make that a positive end. And negative 4 over 1 is negative 4. So, a negative times a negative is going to be positive. The 4's cancel. And negative times negative is just going to give me positive n. And then 0 times negative 4 is 0. So, give 15 a try. You can pause me and give it a try. All right. You have 1 half times x minus 5. So, we're going to start by adding that 5 to both sides. Remember, the equal sign splits it. So we're going to have 1 half x, negative 5 plus 5, adds out, equal sign comes down, negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Now how are you going to get rid of that 1 half times x? Yep, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so you have 2 over 1. 2 over 1 is just 2. This time I didn't need a negative. Here I had a negative, so I needed a negative. So the 2's cancel, 1's cancel, and you have 1x equals negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And you're done. Your homework's on Schoology. It's not in your book. So, good luck. See you next lesson.